Welcome to Watch Guard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is the crack Wi-Fi attacks. By far, the biggest story today was news that a security researcher disclosed a number of critical vulnerabilities in the primary protocol we use to protect our wireless communications. If you haven't heard of WPA2, it stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access, and it's a security protocol used to encrypt our Wi-Fi communications. In fact, in fact, you might remember a similar such protocol called WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy. Like WPA2, this was a previous protocol we used to secure wireless traffic. However, back in 2004, researchers found a protocol-level vulnerability in WEP, which essentially meant that attackers could decrypt WEP communications within a very short period of time. And that is why the industry, the Wi-Fi Alliance, moved to WPA2, a new standard to secure and encrypt wireless communication. However, today a Belgian researcher named Matthew Van Hoof released 10 security vulnerabilities in WPA2's four-way handshake process. Now, unless you understand a lot about how WPA works, it's hard to technically describe all 10 of these flaws. But all you really have to know is they involve WPA2's four-way handshake process. Basically, when a wireless client tries to connect to a WPA2 access point, after sharing some sort of credential like a pre-shared secret or your enterprise login, the access point and your client go through this four-way handshake to agree upon a number of cryptographic keys that they will use to secure all your future wireless communications. The problem is Van Hoof found that a attacker within wireless range of your network can capture some of this four-way handshake process and that gives him enough information to send special crafted packets during part of this four-way handshake process to trick the access point and the client to reuse a key that it used before. And since the attacker now knows the key that your access point and client are using, the attacker can potentially decrypt all those wireless communications. In any case, that's the high-level gist of it. There's actually a lot more technical detail to these 10 attacks, and some of them involve different WPA2 keys. If you want all those technical details, be sure to check out the researcher's white paper. But at the highest level, just understand that an attacker within range of your WPA2 network can trick your clients and access points to reuse keys, which essentially allows them to decrypt the wireless communications of that particular client. Now do know, like the web vulnerability before, this is a protocol level issue. This is not an issue with one particular wireless vendor or operating system. It affects just about any device that uses Wi-Fi. It could be a Windows system, an Apple system, Android, iOS, an Internet of Things device, or just about any access point out there. That said, the researcher does point out that some of these 10 vulnerabilities affect different platforms to different extents. For example, he mentions that Android and Linux devices are particularly vulnerable to some of the worst of these issues simply because of the way they implement the four-way handshake process. But really the moral of the story is any Wi-Fi device you have is probably affected by these vulnerabilities. Now there is good news here too and that's that unlike the wet vulnerability before, these are patchable issues. WPA2 can be fixed. In fact, some vendors have already patched these vulnerabilities. Basically, the researcher behind these disclosures, once he figured out how big an issue they would be, he coordinated with a couple of organizations like US CERT and the International Consortium of Advancement of Cybersecurity on the Internet, another uh, organization, to coordinate the release of this information. That means they shared it with a number of vendors, including WatchGuard, by the way, early on, and gave those vendors enough time to patch by the time the researcher shared this information. The result is Microsoft has apparently already patched Windows as of this October patch day. Insiders say that Apple's iOS and OS X might also be patched. And over the next few weeks, you're going to see a number of wireless providers uh, share updates for their uh, products as well. While we're talking about affected products, do know WatchGuard has wireless solutions. Uh, we have our Firebox managed access points, Fireboxes with Wi-Fi 
built in, and also something called secure cloud Wi-Fi, which is cloud-managed access points. All of these solutions are affected to some extent by these 10 vulnerabilities. But the good news is WatchGuard is one of the organizations that received early disclosure of these issues for this coordinated release. As a result, we've already created fixes for these vulnerabilities in-house. If you use WatchGuard secure Wi-Fi, your access points may already be patched. On Sunday the 15th, uh, secure cloud Wi-Fi access points would have gotten an update to fix this. Now, if you use Firebox managed access points or built-in Firebox Wi-Fi, the fix for this will be Fireware 12.01. And this new release is due to come out by the end of October, so be sure to get it. Now, do remember these attacks primarily target wireless clients, not the access points directly. So it's most important that you update the operating systems that manage the wireless clients, things like your Windows devices, your OS 10 devices, your Android devices, and your iOS devices. Now, patching your access point can help though. Even though this attack doesn't target access points, by updating your access point, you can prevent vulnerable clients on your network from uh, being exploited until they get their patch. But long story short, over the next few months, we'll have to update both our access points and our wireless clients. Let me quickly summarize. These 10 vulnerabilities pretty much affect every device that speaks Wi-Fi and uses WPA2 to some extent, although some platforms seem more susceptible than others. The vulnerabilities allow uh, attackers to potentially decrypt all your secure wireless communications. This means they can intercept things like passwords and credit card numbers if they aren't encrypted in some other fashion. Now, the good news is we can patch these vulnerabilities. A number of vendors like Microsoft have already released patches, and you should expect every wireless vendor to release patches in the future. In the meantime, while we're waiting for patches, you should still use WPA2, but you should consider some sort of additional encryption. For instance, if you visit HTTPS or secure websites, those communications will still be encrypted. These attacks don't break HTTPS. However, do be aware that there are some previous attacks that might allow attackers to trick your client into not using HTTPS. So really, the best thing you can probably do is use VPN whenever you're connected to a wireless network. This VPN will add an additional unbreakable layer of encryption on top of your communications. So until you have patches for all your clients and access points, you might want to consider VPN. In any case, these are some pretty critical vulnerabilities and we'll probably hear a lot more about them in the next coming days and weeks. Since I didn't cover these vulnerabilities in much technical detail, if you want more detail, I highly recommend you uh, visit the reference section of the blog post associated with this video. I'll be sure to post the researcher's white paper, the website dedicated to this flaw, which is called crackattacks.com, and I'll also have links to WatchGuard's response in our blog posts on this vulnerability. So be sure to check out those references. Anyways, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.